episode five of It's All Black and White. Um, a game that's turned a bit fierce um, only recently, really, over the last few days due to some speculation about a transfer. Um, I'm, I'm quietly confident about this game. Uh, I'm sure Tom isn't feeling the same because he's, he's told me that he doesn't see he doesn't see an easy game tonight. But it's it's a huge game. Every game's huge. I'm going to say it at the start of every video because it is. Every game's huge now. Um, but, you know, th this is a side where, you know, we've drawn to two of them early on in the league. Difficult side to beat. Um, you know, they're really going against all odds to, to, to be where they are in the league. So you've got to give them a lot of credit. You know, there's a lot of heart at that team. Um, some players not being paid and things like that. So, you know, you've got to give them some credit. But, you know, we're on such a good run at the moment. Uh, Langstaff hit 30 goals, which is incredible. Uh, so hopefully we can see him go over 30 goals tonight. Match day, South End. Um, I'm about to head out to work. I don't know why. This is the least confident I've felt in a very long time. L less, less confident than when we played Chesterfield. Less confident than when we played Barnet. I'm not sure what it is. I just think South End are a side at the minute that are obviously going through a lot of problems and it's like brought them together almost. I think they've won four league games on this on the spin. I think it'll be really, really difficult. What's come out with the, the uh, Jack Bridges signing that Knotts have been looking at. Um, personally think, well, it didn't come from Knotts because nothing ever comes from Knotts. So it's come from elsewhere. I think it's possibly come from, I think some from a, a South End reporter. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's been used as a way to try and knock us off our stride. Um, so I'll we'll see how the game goes um, and I'll catch up with you when I finish work. It's about half past six now. I'm ready to go. Waiting for Tom. He's going to be here in about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, looking forward for the team news coming out. It'll be interesting to see how Luke's setting us up tonight. Uh, so roll on, Tom, picking me up. About to set off to pick up uh, George and Jordan then. Um, just like my pancakes, it has to be orange and sugar. It has to be orange and sugar. There's no other option. And I want to know in the comments, do you have dinner as well as pancakes? Because... Pancakes or dessert, so it has to be dinner and pancakes. If you're just having pancakes, you've missed out your dinner. Um, I've just seen the team news. It absolutely screams that we need reinforcements to the bench. It's it's not strong enough for me at all. We've got to hope the starting eleven do it. Jody Jones has got to do 90 minutes at fullback. It, I can't shake. I hope I'm proved to be wrong. I can't shake this feeling that tonight's not going to be our night. In good voice, you might be able to hear with 30 minutes in. Not really much has happened. It only took us three minutes to give the ball away, which seems to be a pattern. I do think we need to do something, as I mentioned earlier, before we, we have to rely on subs. Um, we've had some really good passes through, a couple of offsides for Maka. Um, but we're looking pretty dangerous, as are they on the counter, but it's very, very even at the minute. Austin heads it into the, the side of the net. Fantastic goal. We're really on top here. Glad we got that second goal. Great moment there. The South End manager is giving some instructions to one of his players, number eight. I'm not sure who it is. And Rollo just walks over, completely entitled to be there. Just listen to the conversation. South End manager reacts, pushes him. Uh, he seems to have a little bit of a temper, uh, that guy. So, you know, it's completely legal. You can go over and stand where you want on the pitch. Um, just watch him now. They've won a header. They've dealt with it pretty calmly. I do think situations like this, when, when not so playing like this and in complete control, it's easy to have a lapse in concentration. Um, 
and you know that can swing the game, really get the other team up for it. So we just have to keep it to half time. Corner to Knotts. We're in out of time for the first half now. Not long to go. We've had our chances. We were singing there in the background. I don't know if you heard that. We took it short. We're passing it around. After the second goal, the game's really slowed down. Though we just sort of held possession and just sort of let them come out to us. Really, I think that's that plan, though, because we're, we're pretty thin on the ground in terms of subs. Um, I think you know, fixtures coming again. We've got Dagenham on Saturday. I think, I think that's our plan. Yeah, Jody Jones is looking tired. That's one one thing to mention as well. He's been amazing though. Defensively, he's so good against, yeah. against Fridge. Yeah, he's defensively, like you just said, been been outstanding and, and going forward. So. Wouldn't mind seeing him taken off at half time though, just to, to rest him up. Half time, players are coming back out in a second. Um, other than what George has just said, we've uh, we've been very, very good this half. They're bringing on Powell, I think, who causes problems at their place. I'm sure that's his name, Powell, up front. Uh, scored the equaliser. But, you know, we just need to keep it up. We've not got many options on the bench, but I would like to see Joe Jones more off in the 60th minute. Wouldn't want to see him get injured. Let's hope we can still uh, we can still turn oh, keep keep it at 2-0. I've also just seen the penalty Wrexham got against Scunthorpe. Dive. Tell you who scored, but there's not really much point at this stage. Langstaff makes it 3 0. Probably one of the best finishers you'll see at, the, at this level. Fantastic. It's a fairly tight angle, and he's tucked it right into the corner. Keeper's got no chance. Uh, it's just fantastic. Rubens played it through. He took a couple of touches and put it right in. Fantastic goal from Knott. Mac has been bought our 64th minute. Um, Francis on for him. To be fair, he's run so much he's got no Scott to, to um, you know come on for him so I think it's Ruben pushed up top but still 3-0 got away with one there uh, Baldwin to get the ball away being a little bit loose in possession now we're 3-0 up but still we just need to tighten it up a little bit it's been put across the box and their player really should put it in the, in the goal but he's, he's hit the post we're fortunate to still have a clean sheet some of the football we're playing is, is just so good. Just coming up to 80 minutes, we're still 3 0 up. Southampton still posing a little bit of a threat, the fans have been pretty loud, um, they've been good to be fair. But we've completely changed it. We've got, I think, we've got Sam Austin playing at wing back, we've got Jim O'Brien on. Um, I think there's a fourth in this for us. Um, but yeah, as I say, we're a little bit more disjointed now we've made these subs with to give players a rest. For example, Mac has gone off, uh, he definitely needs that rest. But yeah, let's just, let's just see it out. I desperately want a clean sheet. goes 4-0 to Knotts then. Austin gets his second of the game, his second of the league so far this season. It's been dominant. That's our third game now in a trot of scoring four goals. Um, you just can't underestimate how good this Knotts team are at the moment. County Talk, we are at Medal Lane. I can't quite believe it. Um, we've beaten a very good South End side, four wins in a row. Um, we've beaten them 4-0. And, and, and I made myself look stupid because at the start of the video, I did say to myself, well, I, did, I said, didn't I? I said, I can see this being one of the games we don't come out as winners. And I said the opposite. Yeah, there was no, no point in that whole game where we weren't going to come out on top. Even at 0-0, we controlled everything. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to say one word. Flawless. That's it. Move on. It was flawless. It was genuinely flawless. Is it the best performance of the season for you? Yes. Above Wrexham at home? Above Wrexham at home. It was flawless. I know they're, they're having the troubles off the field, but you know they've been getting the results and they're, they're up there. You know, So I think, honestly, you know, reflection from that to, to the game that we played them you know, earlier on in the season, completely different game. So you've got to give credit to, to Luke and the team for that because they were flawless. They were fantastic. Jody Jones... What player? Should we go on to ratings? Yeah, Sam Slocum. Uh, didn't concede. One sloppy pass all game. Uh, thought he was very good with the ball at his feet. I'm going to give him a 7.5. Uh, I'm going to go 6. Don't think he had much to do, really. Didn't save anything. 
that I recall. Uh, one or two sloppy passes. Six, honestly. Let's go to... We always start on the right. Let's go on the left. Let's go with Chixum. Superb, superb. Um, if the only thing I can really say about Chixum is is crossing, but it was a bit better today. There was a few that were, were better, um, but I think he struggles to beat his man sometimes. You know, it's up and down week in, week out, isn't it? But I think it was a good performance still, so I'm going to go seven and a half. <coughs> I thought he was really good. I'm going to go eight for Chixum. We then go to the right-hand side, Jody Jones. For me, I thought he's never got 90 minutes in him. It, at wing back, you know, he's, he's not been able to play football for so long and he didn't have 90 minutes in it at wing back, but for the 60 65 minutes he did have, it was unbelievable. I mean, Jack Bridge, we've been looking at Jack Bridge, see what he's about. Couldn't get past Jody Jones. Let's be honest, Jody Jones isn't a defensive player and he stuck with him all game. He was so dangerous. Burst of pace still, 55 60 minutes into game for me was. I've got to say, if Sam Austin hadn't scored two, I'd have given him man of the match. I was just going to say that. I was literally just going to say those exact words. Uh, I'm going to give him an eight and a half. I thought he was literally, I'm going to say it again, flawless. He was fantastic. He really was. Wouldn't flawless be a ten? All right, then he was just under flawless. Just under. I'm, I'm going to go... He had a few panels. Though. I'm going to go nine. Nine. I thought he was so good. Then go to... Should we go Rollo first? Let's go Rollo. Best thing he did all game was, uh, you know, wind up the, their managing staff by going over and listening to the instructions given to the player. Um, you know, a few good passes. Maybe one or two sloppy passes. But, you know, he doesn't shriek out of a tackle, and I like that about him. You know, he really sticks in, and he's, he's just that true warrior, isn't he? So I'm going to give him I'm going to give him eight, eight as well. I'm going to give him an eight, and if I'm correct, our seven-game winning streak came when he came back in the squad. I think. I go. think. Uh, we then go Baldwin in the middle. Um, always, always got one sloppy passing in. We weren't, we weren't punished today, but I think what he does off... Like, what he does... Away from the sloppy passes, I think he's he's it can't be underestimated. Um, I saw someone in the week talking about how teams like Man City play and set up, and I'm not, not saying we're anywhere near Man City, but these teams that pass teams to death, they know there's a mistake in them, but the stats outweigh it. And you've got to say at the minute, you know, even when we're making those mistakes, the way Bobin carries the ball out of defence and he's calm and assured, we're, we're a better. We, we saw from today to today, we're a better team with him in the back three. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I think you know he has got one or two errors in him. But he does have the ball an awful lot, doesn't he? He really does. Um, I really like him. I really. Like, I'm going to give him an eight. I thought his performance was, was as good as Rollo's today, so I can't give him any lower. So yeah, eight. I'm going to give him an eight. <coughs> uh, Kyle Cameron, I thought, was his usual self. Very good at linking with Adam Chickson, then swapped to wing back, put some good crosses in. But I can't really say anything else. I'm going to go eight as well. Yeah, give the whole eight, uh, the whole back line an eight. Why not? Um, Bostock. Now he's got match fitness in shops. So good. Yeah, he's, he, he's crossing and his passing were just perfect tonight. He really was. And that, the, the assist for, it was Austin's goal, wasn't it? His first goal. Brilliant assist. Brilliant assist. Um, and one thing I do like about him as well, I said it to, to you guys sat around me, he's, he's the last player out. You know, he goes up to fans, shakes hands, signs, has pictures with him and all that. So it's, it's great to see that, you know. Um, so I've got a lot of respect for him for that and his performance tonight as well. So I'm going to go eight and a half. I think it's also dispelled the myth that we can't have a uh, boss stockpile in midfield. I, 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 would, I would say I said that after that that Boreham game, I think it was, but I think we can now. I think they're just, they've just they got the balance right. I'm going to go for an eight and a half as well. Matty Palmer. Man of the match, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, he was pretty good tonight. He's always pretty good, though, isn't he? You always get that seven and a half, eight performance out of him. Tonight, I'm going to give him an eight. I'm going to go eight and a half. Eight and a half. I thought he was just typical Matty Palmer. When you think we've got those two in midfield... Scary. It's frightening. Frightening. Ruben. Yeah, he played well again today. He did. Um, there's one or two occasions where you're thinking, just take one less touch and have a, have a go, have a shot. Um, but I think he's sort of taking his foot off the gas a little bit with his scoring, isn't he? I think he's trying to bring a bit more to the game in terms of assists, key passes and stuff like that. So you've got to kind of outweigh that a little bit and, and see that in his game. I'm going to give him an eight. I th uh, again, another eight. But I thought he was really good. Really good. I agree with an eight. I think if you go to any other any other fan in this league that supports any other team and say, what does Ruben Rodriguez bring you? Not one of them will say work rate. But every single game, he's the one player that without a doubt... Jody Jones was, was tired. He was. And at one point, Ruben tracked back 60 yards to knock it out of play in Jones' position. Mm. Never, ever stops running. Um, you know, he's played up front today. He's played in attacking midfield. Really good. <gasps> Should go to Sam Austin. Go to Sam Austin. What 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 a player! And he's got his first, not his first goal, his first two goals in the league. Yeah, I'm really happy for him. 
I'm really happy for him because it seemed to be when he was getting getting on in the league, he was just getting assists. Uh, today he's got two, and he's really unfortunate not to get a hat trick. To be honest with you, honestly, Sam Austin is so overlooked. He really like he's when he comes on, he just he does amazing things with that ball. Can you drop him if Scott's fit for Dagenham? Personally, there's no way. It's a good question. It's a good question. I do like the the partnership that Langstaff and Scott have. But in saying that, Austin was so good tonight. I think I think Scott is going to have to fight his way back into the team, yeah? I go nine. It's hard not to give him a nine and a half. Eight and a half, I'm going for. Eight and a half. Nearly had a hat-trick. Maka, that second goal, oh my word. You'd ha If you're not here to watch it tonight, you have to see it. He's arrowed it into the bottom corner. It's an unbelievable finish. For me, he gets a nine as well. He is so dangerous. The amount of runs he was making through. I saw a, a fan the other day. No, it was actually today. I think it was a Chessford fan say that he doesn't really offer anything apart from scoring. Yeah, come on. Absolutely ridiculous. There you go. But what I would say is that would be true for the first five or six games uh, for me. And, and Williams has worked with him. And now look what he's produced. Yeah, exactly. He, he's such a, a great player, isn't he? 32 goals from open play. He's not a penalty merchant like that one at Wrexham. Who? I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah, he, he, you know everything he touches at the minute just t seems to turn to gold. And I was thinking to myself, he did have that spell where he didn't score. Like he scored one in like four or five games and... You know, it wasn't look like he was scoring many goals. Can you remember? Because it was like we were winning three or four nil, and it was like Langstaff would maybe get one or none, and people were starting to say, "Oh, his form's dipping." But it's back right back up there now, isn't it? He could have had a back back to back hat tricks tonight, but it was just unfortunate mm. to not. But I think bringing him off was the right decision. I'm going to go nine. Yeah, but you had he had to be bought off. He's working so hard. Mm. He's the he's, he's technically the only striker we've got. Um, let's go for the subs then, very quickly. I'm I'm going to group. I'm going to do this. I'm going to group them all together. I'm going to give Francis, Jim, and Badge. I'm going to give more a seven. Yeah, agreed. It's not an easy game to come into. I know we're winning, but you know, it, with those subs that were made in the positions that those subs were playing in, it wasn't the natural positions. And there was a few players already on the pitch that weren't playing the natural position. So it's a difficult game to come into when you've got a team running at you, really trying to just score um, and play up to the level. So yeah, I agree with you. I think all seven, fair play to them. Episode five of It's All Black and White is wrapped up then. That's the third time now we've scored four goals on the trot. Uh, we're in fantastic form. You know, you really cannot take this for granted at the moment. Uh, we've never seen Knott's play this well. We're literally on the run, the best run in history, in our history. So it's a great time to be a Knott's fan. It's just unfortunate that Wrexham keep getting penalties. Um, but if you have enjoyed watching, guys, please subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Let me know what you thought of the game and please like the video.